You're listening to the Doug Stanhope Podcast. If only I could stop one heart from breaking, I would not. Hi, Lord. Uh, that's an amazing offer, man. Thank you so much. You're a generous guy. And I'm sure part of it's because you feel guilty for causing this in the first place, for giving me this, um, but I have a little money saved, and I'm going to get a job somewhere, I, I hear Sully's letting me hire, and I think I'm, I'm probably underqualified, but um, I don't know, I got, I've got connections in the gold, so I'll, I'll be able to get a job somewhere until making heals. So That was Nowhere Man and a Whiskey Girl. This is part two of the Cliffhanger podcast, and I have to start with a warning. A, if you have not listened to the first part of the Cliffhanger podcast, this will be completely lost on you. So shut it off now and go back and do that. Uh, It's on DougStanhope.com on the podcast button. I don't know. You you found it the first time. (laughs) I've never listened to this shit And uh, B, if you're coming here for closure or some sweetheart memorial service, this is really not the place. (laughs) We do that shit on our own time. Yes, this is uh, to follow up and uh, celebrate the only way we know how. We're broadcasting live from the uh, house of Nowhere Man and a Whiskey Girl. Uh, that uh, I own, and we can't even find the lights that work. Like, the fixtures are all fucked up. Like, what kind of slumlord did you think that I was <laughs> that you wouldn't even ask me to fix the fucking lights? But they don't work. <laughs> I swear they don't. Uh, I guess I, I should back up. If you listen to the first one, I guess there's some guy out in Slovenia that listens to this on the cheap <laughs> And that's his only 
I assume everyone knows what happened between Cliffhanger 1 and Cliffhanger 2, but you probably, some of you don't. So uh, in Cliffhanger 1, Whiskey Girl was going in for uh, open heart surgery to replace possibly two valves in her heart. And Nowhere Man was there saying, uh, I I guess we were kind of, well, I'm always betting that she's going to die in any circumstance. I taught her the word moribund. What does that mean? About to die. I'd always fuck with her. Any future event that's going to happen. She had lupus. So as soon as I found that out, celebrity death pool. I can't, I can't mock dead people I don't know and not mock dead people I do know. So when she said she had lupus, and like, if she said, oh, what are you guys doing for Thanksgiving? Any future event? Uh, probably going to your funeral because you're going to be dead. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, yeah, it's a running joke. And that running joke led into her open heart surgery about to happen. So we, uh, we did that podcast on the fly with Nowhere Man when he came back from the hospital going, hey, this will be funny. <laughs> he gets the joke. And uh, so we uh, rushed Chaley into putting that podcast out quicker than any podcast we've ever put out. Like we actually do this for a living. So, yeah, that went out on the Sunday. And Monday morning before the open heart surgery, Whiskey Girl died. Yeah! (laughs) Not how the joke was supposed to go. So, then we're leaving for the road. Uh, Chaley and I literally have our bags at the front door about to leave the house and bingo as well. And she gets the call from nowhere, man, that she died and bingo. She's not fucking handled to deal with this shit. So she, she cancels her trip on the road. Chaley and I get on the plane. We go there, say, Hey, you take care of nowhere, man. Tell him we'll fucking fly you both out as soon as he gets back here don't let him sit in this shit we'll fly you both out on the road or wherever the fuck you want to go just get him out of here we get on the plane dressed like assholes as we do with our 70s leisure suits uh and uh jesus there's people there the fuck is that it's Derek Stereo. The oh. radio just came on. Yeah. All right, that's Derek's weird. Stereo. We're in uh, whis- Whiskey Girl in Nowhere a Man's House that where nothing works but the stereo just came on by itself. <laughs> <laughs> not that I'm going to start selling this as a haunted house. I'm not going to do that. I don't need the money. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of creepy as shit. We should have found out what song it was or something for the urban legend. I'm a lonely boy. Uh, just crank. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I, just, I just get some goosebumps. All right, yeah. That's the bad thing about being an atheist <laughs> is that all that logic that you, you, you know, I, I'm a proponent of, uh, no, that's dumb, but you want to believe that that just meant something. <laughs> but I have to discount all my atheist belief, <laughs> beliefs to say that. Anyway, so yeah, so Chaley and I were on the plane, dressed like fuckheads, because we always dress like fuckheads, because we get bumped up to first class a lot, (laughs) and I always find it important to look like you don't belong in first class. If you're going to get the upgrade, you should look like a cunt, because I like those looks of people going, who are you? Why is that guy dressed up? But now I'm like intermittently crying. At one point, Chaley saw me with my floral eye mask on <laughs> and my fucking anchor man 70s leisure suit and it, there were tears coming from underneath the eye mask it was fucking ugly and bingo came back and you were you nowhere man came back and spent the afternoon with you the whole day doing oh. uh well eat the mic lady uh, i don't know if i'm ready you talk so right. a little bit i'm sorry i'm not ready well, all right. Uh, well, I'll tell you what we did. Okay. We drank like a motherfucker, because when dead friends die, when they <laughs> when, when friends die that are not supposed to be dead, that's what you do. Is you day drink with reckless abandon, because when when someone who isn't supposed to die dies, it puts all 
of the rest of your world in perspective where nothing matters. The gig doesn't matter. The bar tab doesn't matter. I have 10 sneaky bottles of vodka that I got through on airport security. I don't need, uh, fuck it. We're just going to go to the bar and spend $13 a piece and keep them coming. Fuck it. And that's what we started doing. Bingo. I'm talking to you from the house. Okay. I'm with them. When I get to Atlanta, we're on a layover call. Now we're pretty fucked up. Even Chaley was crying at the bar, which, yeah, Chaley, even Brian Hennigan had to admit he showed emotion when he found out. So I call you. During the day when me and that's, Derek were. Yeah. He said that he felt actual emotion. No one witnessed Brian Hennigan having emotion for the record. But, uh, yes, uh, the, the fact that he would admit it. Usually, if he had an emotion, he'd lie about it and bury it in a fucking yard somewhere. <laughs> no, I didn't have one. Uh, so I call I call you, Bingo. Bingo, I'm talking to you. I know, I'm trying. Okay, keep this on your chin. I'm trying. Yeah, so yeah. I called you at the house. You're with Nowhere Man, and he's doing pretty fucking well. We're doing good. We're doing good at this time. We're having some beers. Um, he was with, uh, he was the one who had to tell the doctors to let her go. And then, and it was, you know, pretty fucked up. So then, then they cleaned her up and he got to be with her and hold the body for a while. And then he told me, cause we were going to go up to go on the road. And he's like, no, bingo, you stay at the house. I'll come down. And he got on the road so right away. You, you were talking, he, he, he was in Tucson with her and at yeah, the hospital and bailed on the shit to come down. He bailed down on everything. And, and, and he was just like, you, no, And then bingo, you were going to fly there. out of yeah, so yeah. we're hanging out and having beers, and it was really beautiful, honestly. I mean, we were we were totally choked up sometimes, but mostly it was it was really fucking beautiful. The, what I s- said on the road when I talked about this is it's the the dead friend day drunk is where you drink and then you cry and then you laugh and someone says something inappropriate and then you laugh more and then you cry and you drink more. And it sounded well, like you were having of, the same. We day were as doing us. the same thing, and one of uh, it was we we couldn't figure out. I mean, he had come down here not telling a soul oh, okay. that Amy died. Not he didn't tell a soul. He told. He, he told his mom and his sister that Amy was getting better after she had died. After he had seen the body. Yeah, he could. He couldn't. He couldn't handle it. You know, so he came down and. Um, we were talking about that and we couldn't figure out how to fucking do it. Like who the fuck do you call? How do you say it? How do you, how do you, how do you get those words out of your mouth? And, and we were, we were just trying to say it ourselves out loud. And you know, I it was my dumb. I was like, yeah, we should just Facebook it. And he just started laughing, but he, he couldn't figure out how to phrase it funny. And that's when he was so adamant on having you do that. And that's when we were texting you and trying to call you and figure out how how you have to do this for us because we can't do it. We could not do it. That's when Chaley choked up at the fucking Atlanta Sky Bar. Uh Uh-huh. Sky Club. Oh, okay. Hey, good. uh, Hey, this is a great time to plug uh, Delta Sky Club. Hey. (laughs) (laughs) No, we were in the Sky Club and Chaley choked up. And he's like, Brian, they're not emotional guys. Yeah. And... So I'm like, I don't, I can't do Facebook on my phone. Yeah. So I'm making him figure it out. We're shit based. We've been, you know, drinking since Tucson. So he figures it out and I'm all thumbs trying to, and I just decided to write it in her voice. Yeah. Hey, sorry, bad news. I'm I dead. I, I'm dead. <laughs> said or do something nice for someone. I don't, I don't remember. Yeah. But I put it in her voice and. Because we waited for a while and he just kept bugging me about it just like did you call Stan up did you is he gonna do it is he gonna do it you know and when it finally came up he read it and he just sat in front of the computer and um and just cried and he just kept saying over and over again it's perfect it's perfect it's so beautiful and for a little while we watched like people's comments come up but when shitty comments came up you know like is this a joke thing we're like fuck this whatever but he was so happy about it he was so happy about it so the next day, after the dead friend day drunk. Well, wait, wait a sec. What? I mean, I, like I really have to say how 
happy he was. He kept he kept talking to Meatwig the cat, and he kept talking to the sky, and he just kept saying over and over again, you know, Amy, you're out of pain, you're out of pain. I'm so happy. I'm so happy you're out of pain. He just kept talking to the sky over and over again. It was a big long conversation with Amy, and he he was he was happy. You go. No, 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 no. Oh. I'm good. Well. Uh, so the next morning, we wake up in a fog, which is the worst hangover, is the dead and day drunk hangover, because <laughs> then you just racked up a giant. I'm plugging things I used as a bit that I will never use again on the road <laughs> into this to try to give it some context and uh, a timeline. But the next day, Chaley and I are fucked. I have not worked on my act. And uh, our friend's still dead. So we get shitty, greasy breakfast in uh, Nyack, New York. And the phone rings. And it's bingo, even more hysterical. And when I picked up the phone, she's like, I don't know what to do. You have to help me. And my thought was, what, did she get deader? Because I'm a miserable prick in the morning. Yeah. I didn't say it, but I'm like, what, is she dead or come on? <laughs> Listen. And, yeah, no, she was staring at uh, his body. He killed himself. And she's looking at the body. And I, I said, you know, did you call 911 was my first thing after I, you know, a, a gulp. And she said, no, and that would probably be the first thing to do. <laughs> You're right on that. <laughs> yeah, yeah maybe, maybe maybe you'd want to call them first. And you could hear his mother screaming in the background, and I just, ah, yeah, oh, fuck. So, but you woke up to his mother. Like, she still didn't know that Amy was... Eat the mic. You're the sound man, for Christ's sakes. Uh, by the way, uh, 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 Chad Shank and Steve Drew from here in Bisbee, who were around for all of this, are, uh, Steve Drew is our de facto Chaley running the board, so if the sound sucks, don't blame Chaley. We're just doing what we can with what we got. We make do. But Derek's mom still doesn't know that Amy's dead at this point. She does she... now. That's why she came over. Oh, okay. See, I thought... Yeah. Because she didn't know why he didn't tell her. Yeah. How did she find out? Uh, uh, Facebook? <laughs> oh, my Facebook post. Oh, that's fucked yeah. up. All right. Yeah. All right. I was not here for all of this. All I know is I have to go out on the road and try to make funny out of this or despite this. So I wasn't around. I'm. There's a lot of shit I don't know that happened that uh, I didn't want to know till. So... She, Nowhere man. We keep saying Derek is nowhere man. Amy is whiskey girl. So I, uh, yeah, if we vacillate. Uh, so Derek's mother didn't know. Derek was telling his mother that she's fine and getting better and they'll have surgery in a couple weeks. Yeah. Exactly. But then she sees yeah. well, somebody whiskey tells girl her say, off of Facebook or yeah. whatever. I don't so know she, she came over here. Facebook. She came over here and then that's when I woke up was... She ran over to our house because we live Next, 10 feet yeah. away. And um, so I came here by myself. Because she was screaming. Yeah. My so I was, dead, et cetera. I was in here with the body by myself. For, that's when I was calling it. Oh, God. Don't worry. This won't become a memorial service. This is a goddamn podcast. And if you don't want it to be, uh, take uh, tones of. Uh, Inappropriateness, fuck off. Because they enjoyed it. <laughs> <laughs> listen did. to part one, fuckers. Yeah, yeah, listen to part one. I'll play you some voxes. Uh, so. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Play the, that vox of Derek. Yeah, I'll play that vox of Derek. We might have to pause, but uh, so yeah. So then I called Reverend Derek, our friend, and Chad Shank. Once I heard about that, you take over. I, I was because I, I have was, this is the shit I haven't heard. Well, I was listening to the first podcast when you called me. I hadn't listened to the first Cliffhanger podcast, so when you called me, you were in the middle. And of said that. I was listening to to Nowhere Man talking about 
joke about killing himself if Amy dies. So I was pretty taken aback, but I hurried up and got down here. Yeah. And then uh, uh, Steve was already here. I called Steve. Yeah. And uh, Reverend so, Derek was here. And, and that was when you called Reverend Derek and told him to start hammering in a, <laughs> for yeah. rent. Um, <laughs> yeah, no, we, we tried to start with the gallows humor only. If You have to understand Reverend Derek. He's not old. He's probably 38 or so. But he's been in an accident, so he has this uh, glaring limp. That his one leg drags behind the other, and he has the you know a thousand yard stare of a pervert. So I told him while the body was still in here and the police tape was still up, I go just limp down there and slowly start hammering a for rent sign in on the front lawn, <laughs> like some horror movie caretaker. <laughs> Yeah, I thought that was hilarious. <laughs> if you could picture him doing it, God damn it, it was funny. Yeah, it was. So basically, Steve got here, Chad got here, and these guys were, these guys were my cleanup crew. Yeah, I didn't know. I would assume that you see the crime cleanup places, but Bisbee, Arizona, fifty five hundred people. Nah, no, they I, they go. Eh. I th- I thought the same thing. I was like, "This is all just still here." When we came in, I was like, "Oh shit!" Yeah. But his mom was left and said she wanted to come back and stuff. He so shot himself through the head, so people laying listening. in bed, laying in bed. So the matter is still in the bed and around the bed. Yeah. yeah. On the walls. On the, the walls. Deal. So uh, what's that? They never do that. Sorry, you're not on a mic. Cleanup crews never do that. Is what Alex is in the background. Obviously, yeah. But yeah, usually there's a well, call. La- later on, I had to do a Google search, and I found out that uh, outside fire department will hose stuff down for you if it's outside. But if it's inside, it's basically your responsibility. You can hire. But we get a cat out of a tree. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah. they won't get brains out of a bed. You yeah. should have thrown a cat in the brains, <laughs> and then you- thrown them in a tree. But we that's, knew at that's this That's almost point, not funny because the cat was under the bed fucking freaked out. Yeah, the cat was under Yeah, they him. did have a cat. It was under Derek when I found the cat. It was laying under... Uh. Right. But, um, so yeah, so we knew that his mother was going to come back. So we had to clean this shit up right away. Well, and Steve had, was like on his on a lunch break. No, he shit. just came. He had to like he hurry up on. and get back to Steve work. Steve came so. in in his khakis and his so, work clothes yeah. and his tie well, so we, and some so we'll, shit we'll like that. Just... <laughs> his name tag and his paper yeah. hat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, I gotta get back. <laughs> Nobody's on fries. <laughs> <laughs> So, pays the bills. <laughs> so, so Steve and I, we just gathered up all the the, mat, the linen and the mattress. And we got that mattress over the humped it over the fence. Yeah, we, th- we just threw it. I backed my truck down and we threw it in the back of my truck. And uh, first, Bingo says, "Let me get garbage bags." And I thought, "Wow, we don't want to go through all that shit. We'll just throw it, just wad it up, throw it in the back of the truck, and I'll take it to the dump." And it's messy, by the way. I mean, it's right, it's, it's right. messy. So we get it in there and strap it in my truck, and I go down the road a couple of miles to the dump, where I get in line, and I find out that it's not a dump. It's called a transfer station, which is basically a recycle center. So as I'm waiting in line, I see other people (laughs) throw their garbage out, and there's prisoners from the prison who go through it all. To separate, to separate it. it to send to recycle. So we can't do that. So I'm like, oh shit, I, I can't do this. <laughs> so, so while I'm in line, I reverse out, <laughs> go down. That's when I pulled off the side of the road and did a Google search. <laughs> How do you dispose of this shit? <laughs> How to get rid of a body? Yeah. Well, oh, oh, is the NSA watching? <laughs> <laughs> and, it, and it told me to call the Google. I got to love Google. It said call the county health department. So I called the county health department and talked to them, and they said you have to put it all in double bags, if, you know, and uh, you can just throw it in regular trash as long as it's not. But too, you have a too. mattress, and they don't make mattress size well, trash bags. Well, <laughs> and the mattress, they said you got to go get some like contractors visqueen, like disposing of a body. And then you get some duct tape and duct tape it all around. 
But the mattress wasn't too bad. I thought, well, fuck it. If I can play the mattress off as like my old lady had her period on it, I'm going to throw it away. Because <laughs> it wasn't, it was, there was thick, other thick stuff that soaked up a lot. So the mattress was, well, <laughs> I was thinking of alibis. So <laughs> Chad's always thinking of alibis. <laughs> he spends his days thinking of alibis. You know, like a stupid shit my dad says. He'll have a book. Alibis I thought of <laughs> if you're ever in a pinch. <laughs> and a pickle. So she said that I could throw away the other stuff just in bags. So I went to the Alco little <laughs> store down here yeah. to Bisbee. Half weight Kmart. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And and I went in and I thought, all right, I got some garbage bags. I thought, Let me find some latex gloves. I got to st- stuff this stuff in bags. We don't sell latex gloves at Alco. So I had to get elbow length <laughs> yellow dishwasher. Bowl inseminating <laughs> gloves? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I went outside and then I thought, well, I didn't know if, where I should go to the dump or what. So I just stayed right in the parking lot in Bisbee in the Alco. Now, I told you, you called me, and I said, fucking dump it at the shooting range, because that's like a garbage pile of right. things people just bring out to shoot up, and a bullet hole riddled, riddled mattress with... Full of blood. Yeah, that's a... Who's going to notice? But, so between then... Well, I, 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 I considered that plan B. I thought, if I can't get it through <laughs> the... the the other thing, I'll take it over there. Because I would rather get turned away at the transfer station and say, you have to do something different than get caught dumping a bloody mattress in the <laughs> desert. <laughs> and so... Wait, you don't have a mic. Stop. This is why we weren't going to have people over. Well, if you, have, you can jump on her mic if you need to jump in. <laughs> Go ahead. Okay. So, yeah, so that was plan B. Don't if, Gretchen this up on us. If I... <laughs> If I figured that'd be Plan B if I got kicked back and not arrested from the transfer station, so but then I basically had to sit out in the Alco parking lot in Bisbee and separate pillows and blankets and shove everything into Bloody like four brains. garbage bags with big elbow length rubber gloves on, and nobody ever batted an eye. People were pulling in and parking next to me. People were going in the store, and I'm thinking the whole time, well, I'm gonna get in trouble. People, <laughs> nobody ever did no well no that's actually a that's a future podcast i was gonna say like when we had to pull you out of a denny's in a psychotic oh, state right. but that won't go out till next week so you're you're stuffing uh bloodied sheets into a bag yeah like a sons of anarchy episode in the middle of bisbee and, and uh if you don't know chad shank and you don't he looks like the guy that would be stuffing these <laughs> do rag bikery looking guy exactly. stuffing bloody rags into the publicest of public spots in a hundred miles is here at that Alco parking lot jamming shit into bags. <laughs> so they t- you brought it. They took it. They didn't question me at all on on any of it. They went mattress. Over they it. took mattress. I had it flipped downside so you couldn't see the mattress, <laughs> and you just tell the dude that works at the dump in Bisbee. He's not. He's not investigate shit. What do you got? I got that's a dirty they, mattress. And that's some garbage. How it, that's how they they would sell it at your thrift store here in town. Is oh you can't turn it over. Yes. it's five dollars if you buy it <laughs> sight as seen. <laughs> I think I did say that to Bingo. Uh, yeah, hey, the mattress is fine. We'll just flip it over. I think I actually yeah, said did. that to you. <laughs> you did. You or maybe I said it, it to you. No, know. you said it to me. It wasn't. It was not. Too. All right. So uh, you got rid of that. Bingo had to deal with the family now. I'm like, just get the fuck out of it. Bingo's, you know, she gets scared. We have Vine videos of her getting scared at putting like a... <laughs> A big rubber spider yeah. that's obviously fake. She should not be dealing with this. Yeah. I, I was here when the family was here, and, and Bingo did really good. She Bingo did was okay. fucking fantastic. I was, I was really did okay. impressed. I was impressed. <laughs> uh, as Alex always said about dead people, that I, I think I, I, uh, Alex is a friend of ours who is not on mic, but if you want to be, grab one. But you always said the sadness comes when they stop bringing food. Like for those first initial days, it's panic and haywire and oh fuck! And now we have two families fighting over the 
Our uh, sadness came when the food arrived. <laughs> 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 yeah. This is you, that motherfucker. Was, that was this is not me. It's me again. Well, I was part of my job to hang out here was to kind of keep people from overwhelming bingo because yeah. it's a busy little right. town. Everybody wants them. So I was going to try to buffer and be like, no, stay back. So somebody came in before we realized it. We were sitting there drinking <laughs> and brought some food and real nice. And, uh, so just said the wrong said thing the to wrong Bingo, thing. and I recognized right away that Bingo was trying was about to snap. So I was trying to hurt her outside, and it didn't work. Bingo ended up <laughs> kicking this lady out of the <laughs> get the fuck out of my house. Well, other people said some shit. You, Jen, oh, was Jen here was from here the Shady for that. Dell. Plug. Hey, this uh, suicide and uh, death. I always want to say murder suicide, which is not the case. Not really. Just, but it rings well because that's what they say. It's a death suicide. Well, Bingo said earlier that he did tell the doctor yes. to go ahead. So technically, all right. You're, so you're murder murder let's say murder go suicide. Ahead. Poetic license. It, it just it makes yeah. It makes it. It sounds more has more puffumph as they say in France. <laughs> so <laughs> puffumph. It's a goddamn French word. You know, uh, Amy and Derek, they'd back me up, but they're dead. They knew French. You know nothing. So, uh, so yeah, Jen was, Bingo goes to Alco to get I, other I've stayed of, away from everything. Uh, I not have Alco, not. Uh, uh, Ace, Ace Hardware. Hardware. Yes, this story is definitely brought to you by Ace Hardware, where neighbor Dave's asshole fucking kinfolk work in Sierra Vista, but not at this branch in Bisbee. And someone, you went in to buy? I was just getting, we were getting keys for the house for Amy's sisters so they could come and go as they please, you know, and get what they needed. And yeah, it was just the fucked up things people said. The first thing that was said to me was... This was an employee or a person? An an employee. But the first thing that was said to me was, oh, did you find the body? Without any setup. Nothing. A stranger. Yeah. Yeah. Second thing that was said by Bingo another... has blue hair and lives in a small town. So everyone knows Bingo and Bingo has no fucking idea who people Anybody are. Is. So <laughs> they know her and they just, she just said, and Did this you, is an employee. It, yeah. Ace Hardware people, if you ever need keys made <laughs> and your most pis- personal business brought up right in your fucking face. As the tears are weeping down your eyes and the brains are still on the wall. Ace Hardware. <laughs> Ask what's on sale. Okay, so me and Jen are now checking out. Now, this is in the same visit. This You're is the same visit. After, what now did you, we're wait, checking wait, hang out. On, hang on, hang on. When they said that, did you find the body? What did you say? I went blank. Jen, it's what kind did of I her say? Move. I went blank. <laughs> Thanks, honey. Sorry, I'm, I'm trying to. I'm, right. I'm trying to do. I'm trying to balance comedy and a horrible story. <laughs> yeah. No, I just, I just went blank. And same thing with the. So yeah, she gave me a hug, and that was it. And then uh, me and Jen were checking out, getting our keys, and another fucking employee came up to me and just put one hand on my shoulder and was just like, "Are you renting out the apartment?" <laughs> You're and so, so, me. so what? What? Uh, what price did you drop on him? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you gotta, because uh, again, right? You know, it's a hot property right now. <laughs> yeah, it's gonna <laughs> go st- leave go the start. news in a minute. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Uh, so uh, <clears throat> that was my catchphrase. I'm sponsored by whatever made me belch. I Tito's. Tito's, so so after the hardware store people, then you go to the liquor store where some customer. If if you want to go, yeah. you yeah. can okay, go. So, so we we go to the Bisbee Beverage. You, I know Bisbee you have beverage. to eat that mic. I don't know. Maybe you have ah, yourself uh, turned up too much. This, but these mics are a little hotter than those ones. I have a hard time hearing you in person. Yeah. So I know you need to eat the mic. <laughs> So we're just going to get We're going to get pizza and Food Yeah And uh, well we walk in And there's There are no other customers in there and Behind us comes this older guy And I'm not going to describe him Because I don't want anybody <laughs> To track him down and, But he just Every he, older guy looks the same in Bisbee Yeah That's true yeah. No yeah, this guy definitely <laughs> Creepy <laughs> Vagabond 
Yeah. That trailer yeah. for sale or rent. I can't sing anymore. I will have to pay royalties. <laughs> so he and neither of us knew this guy. He, he just walks mm-hmm. up to he walks up to Bingo and he goes, "You're Bingo, right?" And she's like, "Yeah, you know." And we're we're happy. We're about to get pizza. So <laughs> yeah, pizza on a dead man's grave. Even then, it's good. <laughs> Highway 92, pizza and liquor. Stop there. Doesn't matter who's dead. That's a good slice. Go ahead. Sorry, I'm trying to get sponsorship. Uh, yeah, okay. That's <laughs> what you got to do. Tombstone. So, so, yeah, you're, on your pizza? so you're happy and some guy comes up. He, he looks, so he says, you're bingo, right? And she, she says, yeah. And he goes, well, that was a clean sweep of your tenants. We didn't, we're, both me and Steve here Holy are just. Shit. They're just tenants, though. I mean, yeah, according to him. But we, we're, we're just. But he kept saying it because Bingo didn't really acknowledge it. I, I asked, I said, what? <laughs> but I really, saying. I wasn't offended at this point because I have no idea, like, I have no idea what he's talking about. He's probably had to evict tweakers like those ones across the street on Van Dyke. Then. <laughs> yeah. he, he thought he could relate. <laughs> <laughs> You know, he's doing the eye, two fingers, eye to eye. Get it? You know, clean sweep. No, he, he was. I mean, he was. He wanted her to get it. Like she didn't understand what he was talking about. But basically, so me and Steve yes. just sat there staring, and we're looking at each other like, what the fuck? And we don't say anything to him, and then he just walks away because we. I didn't know what to say. We've really discussed moving since this happened. Yeah, we have. As recently as yesterday, we have Boulder City, but it's not good for the dogs. Wow. Uh, but uh, we won't. We've discussed a lot of things. Yeah, I know. Like getting the fuck out, changing our lives, getting healthy. <laughs> but moving, we won't. <laughs> finding that guy and sicking Rottweilers on him. <laughs> yeah, we we discussed a lot. That, but that's really. Yeah. I'm so happy I wasn't here during that because I would have had to leave. I would have just said a bunch of shit. I don't leave my house anyway. For the most part, I never leave the comforts of my fence. If you like me, come over here. I because I if if I had a problem with a guy like that, I'd vacillate. I'd wake up going, I should apologize. I'd spend the afternoon going, well, he's kind of wrong. I'd spend the night fucking loading chambers to find him. So, yeah, you're the same way. The whole time Steve was telling that story, I was just glad that I wasn't there. <laughs> like, yeah. yeah. You have you have no uh, safety valve because zero. You, very, no. I, I very logical. I can't until something fight. Erases I have to, all of it. I yeah. have to go home and figure out how to buy a gun and all that. You can just take care of business right away. I go. I can't fight. I'm weak. I'll just stew over this for years and decades and watch my hair fall out. But I'll never forget you. Uh, speaking of thinking about buying the gun. Buying the gun. Okay. Okay. So everybody, people don't know that well, okay, we, we found. Okay, we Facebook the thing. We Facebook the thing. Uh, and then. He. I don't. I, 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 we were when, cleaning when he, when up. I found out he died. Okay. I assumed that I'm supposed to Facebook his thing. Yeah. Because you. He desperately wanted you to do Amy. We just figured. The, the fact, like, there was a lot of things we found out after the fact. Yeah. After he gave me her Facebook password and login Everything. information, and I just posted that. I wasn't sitting on there trolling people. Ah, just kidding. No, I'm dead. No, I'm not. I want to fuck you. Hey, who's your mother? <laughs> no, I posted that and left. But then you found out, well, actually, no, when he, you told me he killed himself, all right, uh, that's why he would not... He could have written the same thing I wrote. Yeah. Yeah. So but I assume thing... he's given me the so I I just posted on her Facebook, hey Derek decided decided to fuck, it's hard to say this yeah. shit. <laughs> it's so hard coming home like I've been on the road but look at someone and just saying they're dead. Uh Derek decided to join me in the night. Uh yeah. And Enjoy then whatever else nice. Yeah. I assume that's why he made me do the first thing. Yeah. But the well, thing he is, he, well, he, he, he absolutely knew. Yeah. Obviously, we found when we were cleaning up the body, when we were cleaning up everything, we found uh, the, the police. The when, when, I was with, when I was with Derek, the police, 
came and took the body away. And they okay. were very cool, and I can't the thank police the were very police fucking cool. enough. They've changed a lot of my opinions on police, at least the ones here. Not yeah, most places, no, they were really... But, uh, and not just because of this, a lot of other instances. Yeah, they were really great. But, um, but as we were cleaning up, we found the bag and the receipt for the gun. Yeah, the case. So he, what had happened was he, Amy had died. He held her. They cleaned her up. He told me to stay here. He drove home, and when he hit Sierra Vista on the way home, he bought the gun. He the, came the here. He told me he was going he was going to take a shower and then come over. So he had just bought the gun, completely sober, completely thought out, and he had the gun ready to go the entire fucking time, the entire day I spent with him. Like and it was his, fun- it was his plan. And, it was his plan. And the funny part, I love this that, part that Chad Shank and Joby noticed. <laughs> he loaded the whole. He lo- gun. loaded the entire gun. This is not a guy who knows guns. Nowhere man was a. a uh, a pixieish man, I, I could say to his face. He died like this with his hand like this, Stanhope. He did. Flopping in a, a, in a, in a, a, a really gay, gay way. way. In a, a gay limp way. This is how I found him. It was like this. I'm serious. <laughs> he was, was not a cute. gun guy. So he so was planning to kill himself and loaded the entire gun. Was it <laughs> automatic or? Uh, it was, like, I believe uh, it was a revolver. It was a revolver. revolver. Yeah, I saw the gun. Yeah, he had. Uh, it was a revolver. Points, yeah. Yeah. Loaded the whole thing. Yeah, the whole you know, thing. It's <laughs> kind of funny. You know what? It, well, it is because you know what it made me think of is when we when we were doing Death Pool. I have that pick Daniel von Bargen who shot himself with a revolver and only loaded one round. And remember, he had to call nine one one because he didn't do it because right because he was still alive. <laughs> <laughs> I remember that. Yeah, we had we played it. It was anyways. The guy shot himself. We had to call nine one one. They had to come get him. I have him on Death Pool this year, but. No word. <laughs> Anyways. No word. Probably not I, the I podcast for a death pool. I digress. Well, Doug Stanhope, celebritydeathpool.com. Anyway. We're, uh, we're no hypocrites. <laughs> we're no hypocrites. That's the tag. We should make a, a, a Nowhere Man and Whiskey Girl t-shirt. <laughs> we're no hypocrites. We're no it's, hypocrites. It's, it's just their logo, but it's our name, Doug Stanhope, deathpool.com. We're no hypocrites. <laughs> 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 okay, you want to talk about the No, you said you, you came into the toilet and said we have to mention this And I don't know if we mentioned this Oh, I thought it, uh, the $10,000 was funny Oh, I, well, I don't remember this This is, must have been when I was in Atlanta drunk and called okay. back and You were drunk It seemed and you like told everything me, was fine with you told Nowhere me, Man Yeah, and, and me and Nowhere Man were doing great at this point I, Why did I expect her to say Coke? <laughs> did, you <know> <laughs> <laughs> did you think the same thing? We were doing great. Oh. I thought Coke was there. Like, that would have been weird. Great great was about fourth on the list. <laughs> no, at this point, there was a lot of crying and there was a lot of laughing. Right. But um, you had told me, because we had already done the Cliffhanger podcast, right? Oh, yeah, so yeah. So you told me. Offer him ten thousand dollars, completely serious, not to kill himself before we get the second half of the cliffhanger podcast. Oh yeah, don't kill yourself till we get the second half. Yeah. I'll give you ten grand straight up. And, but I told him that, and I was just like, "No, we're serious. I'll give you fucking ten grand right now." He told me, "Get him the ten grand." Do you want to talk about sex underpants? But you sex do? underpants is in my notes. So we're uh, we're gonna do a. I was gonna do this anyway. Yeah, I did it like ten years ago. I had a just a eBay yard sale of all the dumb shit that I keep because I wore it on an album cover or in a fucking interview and a fucking thing, and just all this shit we keep that just clogs up. I'll never see it or use it. So we're going to do that anyway, but we're going to find Derek Sachs underpants because we posed for those pictures on Facebook and Twitter in our Sachs underpants. Sachs with two X's, they're another unofficial sponsor, uh, and we're going to sell dead man's Sachs underpants because when we try uh, for charity and uh, for charity. Sure. when we try Why to sell my mother's charity? ashes Goodness. for the you know, the animal Human fucking league of animal people. I don't know who that. They're probably scam artists, just like the pink people. But either way, 
Yeah, we tried to do that. For, it's a long story. Animal if rescue. You don't know. Or... Yeah, it was a trade out for yeah. a surgery, and I yeah. didn't bet. But whatever. Anyway, I couldn't do that on eBay, but you can sell a dead man's underpants. So we're gonna find the two pictures I have of him. One he texted me, and one's on Facebook of him in two different pairs of Saks underpants. And we're gonna crawl through this house and find those underpants. I already got and them. And on Black Friday, when we do the uh, Doug Stanhope Black eBay. Friday. Yeah, <laughs> did you? Oh, she already got them. I already got your underpants. She, she had another. She had another pair of his underpants. She when she met us on the road, she's like, "These are Derek's boxers." I go, "Wow." How stealthy of you and how <laughs> nimble to be that quick to peel those off his body before his parents came up <laughs> and try to claim them. I also, I, I also, because she, uh, she has uh, some n- nightmares repeatedly about seeing his brains, and I told her that, that she was just envious of brains <laughs> where she tried to poke them into her own ear so she'd be smarter. <laughs> Brain envy. <coughs> Brain envy. The fucking, and, and, and I'm doing a bit about this, so I'm not going to burn it, is that, uh, but the, the, the people who say, well, that's just his way of dealing with it. The dark humor, that's his way of coping, as though they're apologizing for it. There were times where I fucking needed dark humor. I spent that whole tour every day where my eyes felt blue balled from not allowing myself to cry or feel emotions. And the only time I could talk about it like, was like this. Now I can raise my voice and go, ah, yeah, yeah, hey, here's a joke. And the rest of the time, and yeah, maybe it's a way of coping with it, but it's, yeah, you bring by fucking gluten free muffins. And that's your way of coping with it because you don't know what to do. It's someone that's dead and you don't know what to do. No. So you do what you do. Don't apologize for my way of handling it because right. I'm making it fucking funny. Dave Attell, yeah. he called shortly after he heard what had happened and said, man, I heard what happened at your house. That's really fucked up. He goes, I'm assuming they'll be playing your podcast in court quite a bit. And I'm like, oh, fucking thank God. Someone like fucks with you because it just takes all the pressure off it because people die and you need to remember that. But all the, you know, um, That's our, what our he hopes and prayers saying. are with you is fucking. He kept saying that day we spent together. He was just like, he couldn't Bingo. deal with that. People, people die. We're all going to die. We're all going to die. She's dead. She's happier now. She's not in pain anymore. And he kept saying that over and over again. She's not in pain anymore. And and now neither is he, you know? Neither is he, but he kind of stole her thunder. Can we get a, a, a <laughs> agree, agreement on that? Yeah. Would you, you always knew she might die because of the lupus. And then he went and stole the fucking... He did the double whammy and went, Hey, you were the front man the whole time. No one ever watched the band for me. I'm stealing your death thunder. Bam! Go ahead. It's all about me now, cunt. <laughs> Watch my solo CD blow up now. <laughs> Bisbee Slims. Bisbee Slim. Bisbee Slims, com. baby. Bisbee Slim. If we could get Beyonce uh, to fucking get a get a a Bisbee Slim. Uh, what was it? What's the name of the? Do you remember the name of the? Beyonce. Crazy in love. Yeah, crazy, crazy in love. love. Crazy in love. Yeah, get literally. That to Beyonce. Crazy in literally love. Literally, crazy in love. Literally, what it was. literally. Yeah. I'm just looking at my notes. All right. Uh, well, that's the cliffhanger. Anyone else have any? Uh, want to chime in at all? Any other things we're missing? I don't think I wanted to chime in in the first place. Yeah, so. I know. No, wow. neither uh, <laughs> one of us did, and. Uh, but that's it. Uh, hey, tune in next week. <laughs> where? <laughs> where? Tune in next week or one of the upcoming episodes. Probably next week because I don't think we have a lot of shit in the can. Uh, the uh, podcast that was supposed to go out when Cliffhanger 1 went out. But that had a, a sense of urgency because her surgery was coming up. So we, so we held that one. Turns out, yeah, there's a lot of depressing in that one, too. So stay tuned for that. Uh, There's funny in it, too. 
All right, we opened up with them. Now we're going to close out with them. Nowhere Man and a Whiskey Girl. Thanks for listening. Saddlebags of love. Well, fucking hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Wait. That was not the Doug Stato podcast till you tell the bullet hole stories. Well, that was just fucked up cleanup stories. Wait, all right. Well, no, when there's a bedroom into a, a foyer. foyer. Okay. Foyer. God, the French so it, are getting all kinds of yeah. shout outs on this these pod. French yeah. Stealing all these American words. <laughs> uh, so, the yeah. Bullet. So, he evidently, he shot himself through the head. Uh, and you know what? If this, I, I keep cleaning it up for the family. I opened with this is not for you. Yeah. So yeah, you shouldn't still be listening. Disclaimed. Yeah, f- fucking ferrets. That helps me too. <laughs> okay. I only say, I'm only referring to one family, and you can both <sighs> assume I mean oh, the other shit. one. Shit. <laughs> what? They don't know. This is like when you're on stage and you say, "Everybody, you know what? most of my audience is stupid," and everyone looks at everyone else, going, "There, a- he's absolutely right." Everybody has some <laughs> level of self awareness. No, they don't. Obvious. And if and if they have any level of self awareness, they know that they're fucking rotten. Anyway, hey. I don't know that. I okay. just assume. I okay. make assumptions. The point is. When uh, the well, bullet went through, uh, okay. Listen, he was he was lying backwards on the bed, okay. So he was looking out the window. So he was completely backwards on the bed. All right, now Shot I have himself. to give fucking diagrams of what the yeah. bedroom looks yeah, like. Backwards Sorry. on the bed. That sounds like he's oh. bent over. That doesn't work. <laughs> there was a there was there was a a bullet hole that went through the bedroom wall in through the foyer and the families are coming over to deal with all this. So Chad Shank and Joby. Joby, yeah. It was Joby that was the family was on the way over and Joby was the one that was like, Hey, we need to go and by the way, Joby was attention to detail like crazy on this. He's because seen we, it. He a was the one that times. was like, Stop the ceiling fan, we gotta scrub the ceiling fan. He's like now all of those scrub marks where we scrub the wall, we need to scrub the entire wall so there's not a big circle of scrub marks. Because like, Joby's dealt with this. His twice. best friend. Bl- right. Twice. Twice. Right. I know one time he had to deal with the actual brains. No, and... twice. He Joby twice. was definitely subject matter expert in this situation. He said if a he family member yeah. saw a speck of blood, that's what they're going to fucking focus in on. So he had, you. Got, I mean, we, we had it fucking scrubbed from head to toe. But well, then, then kind of it fucked comes up to because the... I just uh, there's a really nice white comforter in there that I saw one speck and I go no one will notice if I grab this. <laughs> but these are the uh. things that you go through in a mourning <laughs> process. Go ahead. So we had well, to deal with the bullet hole. Family's well, coming over. Well, the family's coming over, and that was when Joby realized he's like, we got to go do something about that bullet hole. So he took off down here, and I think it was almost my hit of weed or something because I got down here probably 90 seconds after Joby did. He went into the foyer and covered it up fine. And when I walked in, I find him. With just, a picture. Yeah, yeah. I just took a picture off the wall. Because I came in. I said, do you need screws or anything? You know, pictures? What do we need? He says, no, we're just going to do a one for one. He found stuff on the wall. Well, One picture on, the, on the bedroom and one yeah, well, on the exit wound one, entrance. Yes. All right. If you know anything about guns, entry wound, entry hole in the bedroom, really small. Exit hole in the foyer, really big. Yeah. So... He hung the picture over it in the foyer, and then when I came in, he was just standing blankly looking at the wall. <laughs> and I came in, and I'm like, "What?" And I looked up, and immediately saw his dilemma. Because how do you do it without being symbolic? Everything. Is so you're selecting artwork off that the you walls. think is appropriate for exit and entry. Well, we're wounds. hoping nobody will know that it's a boon. Although the entry hole in the bedroom is in a really odd spot in the wall to have a picture hanging just really and low. That's the Very only low. one. But, Very low. but as, the as, I, as I in walk there. in to help Joby, I look up and he's looking at pictures of Derek and Amy holding hands and shit. And I'm like, oh, fuck. How do you do that without being symbolic? So, so in the end, we found pictures that were painted by somebody else so yeah. that they wouldn't take those pictures and put it over the yeah. walls. <laughs> That had to be a very, very long day. It was a very long day, baby. Yeah. And then three more days, or four more. 
I don't know. It's still going on. Totally left, yeah. So, uh, yeah. So, uh, yeah. Go to uh, NowhereManAndAWhiskeyGirl.com and uh, buy their album and then wait for a long, long time for them to uh, do uh, the distribution on that because no one's mailing that <laughs> shit out anymore. We don't know the password. <laughs> I don't know how to close this, so we'll close it very inappropriately. And, uh, yeah, thanks for listening. And, hey, if you learned anything from this podcast, always get the security deposit. No matter how well you know them, always get first, last, and security. Because, hey, they might be your friends now, but they might be lupusy and suicidal down the road. (laughs) Good Good night. Trip drift north, trails narrow to backtrack, go back and forth. Next four seasons rocky, mountain will be for our little tumbleweed. Eyes at night, big and bright, deep in the heart of tumbleweed. Deep in the heart of tumbleweed.